Hello! How are you today? Um, welcome to the behind the scenes of Hard Times Mix, which if you haven't watched, this is major, if you can call it a spoiler alert, major spoiler alert, you should watch it. It's over one of the sides. It's on one of the sides. I put it there in the card. It's also in the description. Um, you should go check it out. It works really hard on it. It's, yeah, this is the behind the scenes. Welcome. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sydney. I'm autistic, disabled, gay, and uh, my favorite color is buttercup yellow. Those are all the things. I'm also a college student at the moment. I'm currently at a conservatory in Italy for performing arts, which is really super, super cool. Um, and welcome to the behind the scenes of a hard times mix. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you want to learn about this crazy, crazy project that I've been putting together for a year, um, almost a year now. So I'm really excited that people finally get to see it. And Here's how I did all the things. So the original idea was to make it a lot of happy things in one image, but Audrey, who is an artist and knows things and stuff, um, said that that was a little, a little too busy. And so we ended up centering kind of on this idea. So this is the bad graphic design image that I created. So I was using the picture from my album cover for a live with, as you can see, like the skirt and the boots and whatever, with another picture. I Googled depression. And this was one of the photos that came up, the, the rain photo, so I just took that. And then everything else I just kind of threw together on Pick Monkey. So this is my bad example. Audrey turned it into this beautiful, beautiful artwork. Then we came up with this. So I put it into a program and I figured out what colors I wanted everything to be. And then I turned it into a color scheme. So we did the sketching portion on Audrey's wall, actually. She hadn't hung up any of her decorations yet. So we borrowed a projector from our library and we set it up in her room and then we put up each individual canvas and sketched it using a pencil. Super simple, it took us about an hour and a half. The actual painting itself took me about 15 hours based on the amount of footage that I have. It probably took a little bit more. I think my camera died a couple times um, But I did all of that on my floor by myself in my free time during the day So that was an experience and then after that Audrey came to my room and we spent about seven hours We think we didn't film the whole thing But we did go through the first two Anne of Green Gables movies, which are collectively just about seven hours um, and we did touch-ups and when I say we did touch-ups I mean I I sat there while Audrey did beautiful artistry. This is the key I created of all the colors that I was going to need. I added some notes on which ones are straight from the container and which ones I was going to mix. I'm gonna end up mixing most of them I think but yeah so we ended up with 16 colors. It's a little tricky with the gray scale I think it's gonna be a little hard to mix but I'll figure that out later. That's not a now problem. So we went on a trip to Target and I got a bunch of paints they didn't have any paint cups, and so I invested in these little toddler sippy cups, and they all have straw holes, so I'm gonna have to tape those shut. Um, but yeah, we got lots of paints, and they're, they look like this. They're not super fancy or exciting, and that's totally fine. And they're currently living in clementine boxes. Oh, also other supplies that we got is this giant box of canvases, which is there from Amazon, I think. Um, I had a Christmas gift card from Amazon, and so I spent it on all of the canvases. These all have little, so you can see little straw hole. Mm, focus? You gonna focus? Nope, we're not. Okay, cool. So yeah, they all have little straw holes, and I just want to make sure that my paint doesn't dry out because I don't know what color I'm going to be using when, so I can't like use a whole color at once because I have 24 canvases to paint. So I'm just taping these all shut. That went really terribly. Wow. Okay, I'm going to use a lot of tape to tape these all shut. And then I'm going to label them for which color goes in each one. Hey friends, so I had this great idea that I would uh, mix my paint on the floor so that I could film it. And um, yeah, so there's the paint that I mixed. I miraculously did not spill on my carpet. Um, there's my paint cloth. Whoa. There's my paint cloth. And then I sat on it because my skirts are massive. So then there's my skirt that's drying. Hopefully the green paint will come out of my white skirt. And here's the rest of my skirt. So yeah, less than successful, but uh, yeah, we survived. So I just finished painting it. Do you notice something? Do you, do you notice something? 
Oh, that panel? That one? Did, did I... Did I paint it backwards? Why would I do such a thing? <sighs> I'm like low key out of the blue paint too, so this is a little concerning, but it's also quite funny. Anyway, I think I'm gonna cry. It's so beautiful. I mean, I obviously have a lot of touching up to do. We're probably gonna add some extra detailing. Um, I have a wrong color on one of the other ones I need to fix. Um, there's a lot of things, but this is step one. And wow, does she look good. Okay. Go. We were then able to borrow an art room that was not being used to hang up the thing. So we brought a box of tacks and we borrowed a bunch of the rulers that were in the room. And it took us about an hour and 10 minutes to hang the whole thing up and to measure it and all of that good stuff. And then we took the whole thing down and we laid it on the tables and then we did the filming bit that you see in the video. Now you may be wondering about my costume choices because as many of you who've been here a while know, I'm very much a costumer. Um, and yes, every single costume choice that I made in this was deliberate. I don't remember why I chose a flower crown. There was a very specific reason behind it. I, I no longer know what that reason was, but it was very important to me at the time. So if you want to come up with theories of what my brain might have created, you're welcome to do that. Um, and then the dress that I was wearing, you may recognize, is from the cover of my album Start Over, which is my first album. And actually that photo has more importance even than just being that photo, but it was the first time that I had dressed in full vintage with the curls, with everything, and the first time that I had liked what I looked like um, in about two years, and that was a really big pivotal moment for me. So I call it my start over dress, and I wanted to make sure that that was the dress that I wore in this video as well. And now this painting lives happily in pieces in a box in my living room until one day when I own my own house, and then I will hang it up on a wall, but until then, box. So, the music, which is kind of the first part of this project that I, I did. I don't know if I'm gonna edit this out of order because aesthetic, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. But the music. So I came up with this idea generally in October of 2020 just because I was bored and wanted to arrange something, but then I was like, this is actually really important, I want to turn it into something big, it's gonna be really cool. So I arranged the whole thing, but then I couldn't wait a year to record it. I was like, no, I have to know what it sounds like. So I ended up recording the whole thing. It took me like 14 hours or something and then another three, four hours to mix. It was quite the quite the process. I also had far too many different tracks. I'm gonna try to make that last this time. Um, but my voice has changed like a whole, a whole ton since I originally recorded that. So I've also made a couple tweaks to the music itself because I know more about music theory than I did then. I know more about production now. So I am re-recording the whole thing I want to say I'm gonna do the whole thing today but I just put on clothes and it's 3 30 p.m and also it's raining which means I'm going to get a migraine which I already kind of have hence the terrible lighting that's going on right now so <laughs> yeah I'm going to show you my setup and how I'm going to record this and how I put it together um and hope you enjoy so first we have my microphone which is a Shure MV51 I will link it in the description if you are interested I love it very dearly very portable. It's great. It also connects into my phone. But anyway, enough about that. Um, and then here is, that was my finger. That's what that was. This is the GarageBand file with a reflection of my light in it. This is the GarageBand file. Basically, as you saw earlier, I exported each part as MIDI and I put them all into the GarageBand file. And then I am playing one track out loud with the addition of the full score, which is quieter so I can hear it for context. And then I'm just kind of recording one piece at a time as I go through. So as you can see, I have like a million bajillion tracks and I am just over halfway through. I'm going to try to finish it tonight. And then my sheet music, it currently is 40 pages because I've been deleting pages as I record. It's an 84 page document. Um, it is in 11 parts, though sometimes those parts also switch. I think there's one point where we're in like 16 parts or something crazy like that and I actually have this pdf on my phone as well so I'm holding my phone and I am scrolling through the music and reading the music as I record on the computer so that it's easier to do both things hi welcome so you're probably thinking to yourself Sydney why are you dressed up so fancy to spend the entire day at your desk recording because you have a deadline and you have to send the uh the, the not the final mix of it but a basic mix to people tonight and the answer 
is because of a life hack that I have learned from a combination of vocal training and disability. So I'm going to teach you about it and maybe it'll help you. I don't know. Um, but as many people who are singers may know at this point, when you want to belt a note, get a lot of like air out, you want it to move your stomach diaphragm area in such a way that it, it's kind of like you're being punched in the belly button. You just want to like suck that bit in. And it can be really difficult to do that. And as somebody who has a hypermobility thing that might be EDS, no one really knows, doesn't really matter. The, the treatment is the same. If you want to learn about hypermobility, I have a video somewhere. But because of that, I have a harder time holding my joints together, holding my body together. And so I have invested in a custom made corset to do that. I've tried on a couple mock-ups to make sure that things fit and we wanted to make sure I was able to sing in a corset and so we tested it and I realized I was able to sing better than I ever have before and so I was trying to figure out why and how can I take that technique when I'm not wearing a corset because I still had like three months or so of my life that I needed to be recording things and working on things and having good vocal quality and it's just better to you know know those things. So I tried to figure it out and the first thing I discovered is that it's posture. We all know that singing posture is very important, right? And you have to hold yourself up like this. And second of all, because it's already kind of pressing in this midsection, it takes less muscle to push out the way that you would push to belt. And so it takes less energy and less muscle to push that air out. And so therefore the note comes out cleaner and comes out with less air already because you don't have to push from like out here all the way into here, you're already at this point, so it's faster and easier, is my bad explanation. And if any other singing teacher wants to yell at me because I'm just a 19 year old mucking around, feel free to do that. But it works really well for me. I am currently in the middle of a bit of a flare up. So my joints are dislocating and things are wonky and I just don't feel cute. It's not a good time. And I'm having a harder time with posture and holding myself together because nothing wants to stay where it's supposed to and I don't have a corset yet. So my solution to help me to fix that whole thing is I'm wearing an off the shoulder dress. Well, it's not like super off the shoulder. It's just enough that if I slouch at all, it just falls off. So that's a thing. So I have to sit like this. And then I'm wearing a fairly tight skirt, as you can see, and a belt. But I am essentially created a sort of corset setup with my own outfit for the day so that I can still sing in a quality that I want to. And it's made a huge difference. So if for some reason that helps you in any way, I recommend it. Great. Good talk. I'm going to record some stuff. You're going to see it. It's going to be great. We're going to finish it today. Tomorrow I'm going to do the final mix. I will bring you on that process. This video is going to be so long, but it's okay. It's fun. You're learning about all of the pieces of this project because it's been a year of, of work and creation and joy and screaming at walls and all of the above. So anyway, I'll catch you in a bit. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? I stood up when you left him, baby, look at me now. Look at me now. of my face I promise you it'll all make sense again I hello this lighting is worse than all the other lightings I was so excited finishing it that I forgot to film it I'm done it's over. I have so much editing to do. That'll take a couple hours to weed out all the weird mouth noises and breaths and uh, put things on different sides. That's called panning, if you didn't know that. I don't know why I phrased it that way. Um, and all of those other things to make it sound the way I want it to and get everything to the bright microsecond because a lot of it is, you know, bouncing back and forth between different notes. But I'm excited because I'm done and it's been a journey. So I mixed the entire thing during like a six hour-ish road trip plus an afternoon and I totally forgot to film it so do forgive me but that is essentially the whole project. So if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments below. I will either answer them there or make a Q&A in the future. 
not quite sure which thing I'm gonna do yet um, but I hope that this project brought you joy and even if it didn't it brought me joy so thank you for supporting me and, and for watching this and for being here this was a way for me to create something that younger me needed but didn't have access to and so even though I can't help younger me I can hopefully help other people like her so I hope that it did that and to baby Sydney I know that you're afraid to talk to other people about what you're feeling Frankly, because you're not quite sure what you're feeling, but I want you to know that you are loved and that you aren't alone and that things will be all right and you will be okay, I promise. And I know that that sounds like utter horse poo to you right now, but I am you from a year and a half in the future and I just want to say that things get so, so much better. Your moment is coming. I know you're not there right now, but just get through it because things will get better, I promise. And that goes for all of the rest of you too. Please, please take care of yourselves, be kind, and remember that your story isn't over. It has only just begun. I look forward to seeing you lovelies in the next one.